Hello, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of In the Dragon's Den with your boys, Dragon's Fury and... The Infernal of the, the, the Drag. And he almost missed it there, but he got it. Um, we're hoping you're having a good weekend and week, and if you're not, hopefully this episode will make it better, and if it is going well... And we hope we add to it. Uh, there is a possibility that we will ruin it. Hopefully not. But there is that possibility. And fight us if it is. Oh, well, it's still... Uh, if that happens, uh, take a shot. Yeah, take a shot. Make it feel better. So, we have a bit of a mishap. So, I gotta take an L on this one. So, our previously recorded episode turned out to be audio deficient on my part due to being lied to by audio levels. So this is a makeup episode, and if you would like to... <laughs> um, if you would like to get some hint or a bit of a tidbit taste of what was recorded, um, at least from out of Infernal's mouth, uh, you can uh, check that out on the subscriber side. It will be available there. Um, I did not want to make that a regular episode because that's just not okay for all of what was said to be pretty much gone, doing to the fact that I am the main talking point on this. And yeah, but it's not deleted. It's just kind of in the lock vault thing. So that will be shared for those who are supporting us. You get to see the blunders as well. Yeah, you get you get the you get the blunders as well. Uh, so that being said, we are going to kick right into it, and our theme slash topic of the day is going to be uh, villain bios again, um, but for Warframe. And for those who have never heard of Warframe, I'm very shocked, honestly, because this game has been around for a while, even if you're not necessarily interested in playing it, but it's a, I would say it would be the space fantasy equivalent to Elder Scrolls Online of, yeah, I can see that amount of like what it is. So it, it's pretty, pretty expansive. There's a lot to do. In my opinion, unfortunately, there's too much to do, especially for someone who has been there prior to a lot of this content being existing. Um, if you're going in new, not as much of a problem because you will be guided through with a starting point. Um, but for my fellow uh, to know who have been around for some time, things got overwhelming very fast if you didn't stick with it. Um, but Or if you're me and you you join in, see all this stuff, lose where the story goes and you're just like where am i where am i uh that being said i'm not saying there is any less uh fun to be had in it so we are going to talk about the various main factions that are fought in this game um there are kind of intermediary ones uh for the other alliances if you will but we're just going to cover the main ones and so we are just going to kick it off with the Grenier. And these ugly fucks are the product of what happens when your species and don't want to recognize the importance of increasing that genetic pool. And that being the case they are pretty much just walking vats of genetic decay um they have basically like those like royals i think that if they like get get together with any other person uh the genetic code will just dwindle right which is ironically what happens so they have cloned themselves for centuries and they are just in genetic disrepair like there is no coming back from this um even if they were to drop their ideology of the grenier being you know the strong whatever uh, thing that they hold themselves for um there there's no 
fixing this with any time soon, and they're too stubborn to try to fix it or whatever. So essentially, they are taking what they want because there is enough of them, and there's not too many people that can stop them realis realistically with their numbers. They're always around, and they're pretty much just making more on like off rip so there's that problem um and yeah so it's just kind of like a horde of just battery of zombies of yeah essentially of just uh, well okay no that's not true not in this sense can't be zombies because we do have zombies technically in this game and we'll right. get to them later oh dear um so uh, so yes, so the Grenier are very interesting because they, like I said, believe that, you know, they're the better ones or whatnot, and they are ugly, ugly, and I'm not, like, being dramatic or anything, like, they are just ugly, because again, they're just in genetic disrepair, there's no, there's no, for, like, form, like, they look like they have tumors on them, when you're fighting them, like, their various, like, uh, types are very, like, hunchback of Notre Dame for, like, their main infantry types. They have skinny legs, um, tiny heads, and, you know, like, melted, wrinkled faces. A lot of them are, if they made it to higher ranks, don't have body parts. There's a lot of um, machinery that is infused into them to sustain them. You know, the classic, I can't naturally sustain my body anymore due to my the fact that I am just too stuck in my old ways um, to, you know, accept what it is. Um, they are in in my opinion they are a great starter faction for like combat these are the first ones that you go up against when you start the game uh, when you become uh, a week and i don't know if that's still the case because it's been so long but they're pretty much the first ones that you encounter um when you wake up they have heard about you that you are hanging mm -hmm. like you're in a sleep um pod there on the planet and they know the power that the Tino have and they want you essentially well, they do not want you to be a threat and no because they want to use you to be a threat to someone else and so they, they come after you and you learn the ropes of everything that uh teaches you you know crit points etc stuff like you know like basic game mechanics um great sir but but also, as you progress throughout the game and unlock more areas, you realize that these guys are very much widespread. They have taken over or have a presence in a lot of areas. So you don't get away from these guys. And it, it can be annoying, but also kind of like... I guess settling in the sense of, okay, I know what I'm getting myself into kind of deal there's like no real surprises for the most part until you start uh reaching up into the later of their ranks and then things start to get little 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 touch little touch and go but nothing too crazy yeah, um, mama help <laughs> help uh they have their own uh leadership as typical military would have so you have you know your reigning commanders of whatever squad that you may be going against at the time a lot of the locations are being defended by them because that they have taken over. So it's a lot of localized um, organization, but also there is the higher order of the um, areas, I guess, being the twin queens who are the hierarchy of the Grenier and pretty much where it all is coming from. Um, it's not particularly known where they're coming from, per se. Um, it, pretty much their home world, if you will, are gone, like, hidden away, or 
it's just they're really good at keeping that information to themselves because no one can tell you where you came from if they're dead i mean that's fair oh no it is an effective way of keeping information um so it it's kind of one of those things where it's like oh okay that that's very very uh, fun um they do have very um kind of like a mix of organic and inorganic kind of like weaponry it very much like caters to the fact of like they're they can't really sustain things so it looks like it's kind of like okay this is what we had here this is what we had here and you kind of force it together and make it work almost and then it's like traditional stuff like you know like traditional like infantry type guns like pistols shotguns machine guns uh but they also have things like flamethrowers and hammers and axes that are all like assisted with like hydraulics and like grappling hooks with chainsaw blades on them like stuff like that like very cut like very you you know coarse type weaponry the just brute force there's no real finesse in it like these are the blunt hammers of enemies if you will um which you know everyone needs just a a good wall of meat to go against nothing Mm -hmm. you know nothing crazy you know, you don't, I don't need to rack my brain trying to figure out patterns and strategies of how to defeat you or whatnot. It's just me versus you, and whoever hits harder wins. And, and, and I have a bow and arrow. And, and you like, drag your arrow. Um, well, I thought the arrow looked cool. I'm not saying it doesn't, especially when if you, you know, made, made your uh, upgraded one. Um... And so yeah, so that's that's pretty much the Grenier in a nutshell. And now, yeah, I don't know too much about Warframe. Out of all the enemy races in the game, who do you feel is the most terrifying? The motherfucker that you can't fight until you're like halfway through the game that just shows up in missions and hunts you. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> yes, him what the hell yeah um i i can't off rip remember what he's called like he has a name and everything but essentially when you're doing when you're doing various missions like they won't show up in like the beginning things like you will have time to gain some power but when you're going along and you're doing missions and it's almost like a punishment kind of thing like if you're killing a lot of people or whoever that may be, whatever enemy type you're going against, there will be a random encounter that you'll get, like, a vision. Your screen will kind of shake, things will kind of go dark, and you'll get a transmission. It will be a silhouette of a person, well, of a humanoid entity, if you will, that is after you and saying that they're hunting you for your crimes. It's like a weird, sick sense of justice the problem is you can't actually fight this fucker early on you you really need to have and like really strengthen yourself your weapons need to be of a certain caliber and things to even combat him as a group Uh later on you then can 1v1 the motherfucker and win and then you get, like, various things for beating him. But, yeah, no, he will just straight up show up, hunt you, and it's almost like a timer kind of thing that if you're still in the mission after a certain point of time, he will find you and proceed to fuck your day. That will sound fun. And as previously mentioned, yeah, you can't you can't fight him early on. Um... I, yeah, I cannot remember. He was, hold on, let me see if I can do a quick Google search or right not to find him, to give you the, give you guys the actual answer. Uh, and for my fellow uh, players who have done so, like, from that time, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's still a mechanic of the game right now. Um, you may be yelling at me like, oh, it's this, it's this, it's this, but for the life of me, I cannot remember his name. To be fair, I haven't played in a couple years. 
Um, so I don't fully remember, but that it was a core memory. So that's what I'm saying. Um, let's see here. Uh, but continuing on while I'm searching for this. So Inferno, the real question would be of the ones that you remember that you dealt with, because I know you played a lot less than I did. What oh, yeah. would be the one that was the worst for you? Um, I'm trying to remember because God, um, I think because like obviously, like yeah, obviously you have the first enemies that were near. Um, who? I mean, they were definitely the ugliest. Um. I think I had fought Corp Corpus, was it? Is that what they were called? Uh, there is a group called the Corpus, yes. Yeah, I think I got to them. Because I think they were in, like, the next area. They were they were annoying. Yeah, they, I... they do have a particular love for... Hmm. <laughs> it... if, I remember, if I remember right, they had a lot of, like, range stuff there, yes like... there, theirs was a lot of range types things so that works out we will we'll talk about the corpus so the corpus is the case like because my i built my warframe to be like more focused on close combat so when i came across that i'm like oh no oh yeah oh definitely if that was the case if that was your build then definitely they would be a, a freaking problem for you now the corpus um as their name implies is a bit of a play on what they are about are th what happens when capitalism goes to space mm -hmm. um if if you left it out and it's valuable to some extent it's theirs they're going for it they're coming to take it um it, it's a straight thing of profit 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 money 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 this is money. this is what we're doing um they're they're completely governed by a essentially just a grand ceo uh called a corpus board and they are a small they're a smaller faction for sure there is not as many of the corpus because essentially it's basically a bunch of pencil pushers who are like "Ooh, what's the best way to get more money out of you know this thing or whatever they're the people who was that kid that was like, how do I make money off of school supplies? Plot twist, I was that kid. Um, I I sold paper to people at an egregiously inflated price. <laughs> I, I would charge and be paid 25 cent per sheet of paper because I was so annoyed with people asking me for like paper and pencils and I was like, come on this is a high school and like how do you not have these supplies and it also came down to the these people just didn't care so it was like if you don't care about like you know buying the supplies and keeping it stocked to yourself clearly you don't care about losing money because you're not spending it elsewhere so you're gonna give it to me i i came out with a decent chunk of change you know couple, i would say at least ten dollars worth yeah, friggin' pulling a Ed from Ed and Eddie. Oh, not as you know, cynical. It it would be, it'd be more of Ed mixed with Eddie. I'm like, how do I make this work for me? And Ed being, you know, the smart one. Well, double D, being the smart yeah. one. And so yeah. I mean, Ed was smart at times. Yeah, in the corpus kind of way. <laughs> um so let's see here so yeah so that's pretty much them um they have a lot more robots involved in their legions due to them being more focused on optimization and efficiency and what's more efficient than a robot and so a lot a lot of the combat that you have with them are robot types of you know ones that generate shields for them to make them be able to survive compact because again they're not they're not mil they're not militarized they're just pencil pushers essentially um so you have things that you know allow them to protect you have sentries um to guard the halls things think of the roller droids and star wars 
same concept of sentry robots. They're autonomous enough to roll around the like you show up, it's on site. Um, kind of deal. Um, let's see. I'm still trying to figure out what that character, what that character name was. Um, I really wish I could remember. Um, Who are you? If anyone does know the answer, uh, please leave it in the comments for sure if you know who I'm talking about. Because I'm trying to describe it in the into the into the Googles, and it's giving me a lot of other stuff that is available in the game, and it's like this is this is not what I want. It's something else. You know, I'm, when it comes to Warframe, one thing I still find <laughs> quite interesting is knowing that Warframe came was well, pretty much built from Dark Sector, which yes. was a game off which was a game on the xbox such a good game like when i first loaded up warframe and saw the excalibur warframe i'm just like i know you <laughs> it's like i know you yes that was the that was the lore precursor to warframe yeah like pretty much like yeah pretty much dark sector is what led into the warframe universe that was uh, pretty, pretty great like what's i find it interesting is the fact that like because in dark sector um the excalibur warframe was basically came about as a like it was kind of like a viral contagion that was just a mutating the host yeah and, like a, as you play as the game goes on like the armor just continues like encroaching on the host body and at the end you're basically full excalibur i found him he found the devil. No, I, f I found who it, like the guy. So the one who <laughs> who was telling. So he's he's known as the stalker. <laughs> I think devil sounds better. And the and his his quote is, "I am your reckoning." So this Our is guys are... uh, <laughs> basically. So this is what um happens uh so this is off of the wiki that i was able to find him saying so uh, they describe him as a ominous vengeful figure that appears during missions armed with powerful weapons and abilities to hunt down tenno who have his death mark um and this is what i was describing as the that vision you get and he says he's coming for you um the stalker is wearing a frame um it's typically excalibur um I have not experienced him where he's not Excalibur. Well, come to find, well, let's see, I come to find out the Stalker is actually the uh, character from Dark Sector. That would be hilarious, but also it it would make sense. Um, and so let's see what else to say. Oh, uh, because like in Dark Sector there were two Excaliburs. Uh, because like you have the original that infected the main character, and then you have the main character. I never actually finished Dark Sector, just because like I got to, a, like it was that time of gaming where it's like there's there's always at least one level that will make or break the experience for you. Oh yeah, it is and and Dark Sector had more than one, unfortunately. More than one. <laughs> Jeez, damn. Uh, let's see here. So, yeah, so he's usually Excalibur that he's saying, and he won't show up until you've completed a quest called the Second Dream, and that's when you are um, marked, like if uh, Marked for Assassination has completed the... So if you, my bad. So before the hand, when you start getting marked by him, uh, it's a certain level of him. If you, once you complete the second dream quest then you get to fight the shadow stalker oh jesus <laughs> and yikes just, just <laughs> that name um yeah it, it's it's rough and so uh they have a lore in uh entry for him too as well so i'll, I'll share that oh, funness cool. with you so, the Stalker was once a low guardian who served the Orokin. Uh, we'll get to them later. 
and he was present during the collapse of the Orokin Empire. Noticing that the Tenno weren't as stoic and silent, but instead waiting and poised, but failed to warn his masters of the slaughter, the Tenno were prepared to carry against them. Um, were prepared to carry, basically, they were a part of the... It's, I think it's rumored that they were a part of the collapse of the mm. Empire. And so he's so somehow during all of this the stalker survives it and is out for blood so the stalker was die hard you know ride or die for his his masters and the Tenno were like nah these motherfuckers suck and so he's been out here hunting and that and that's the reason why you know i am retribution because it's you know basically blast from the past um and you know you're being hunted across the system and that is why they can show up. It wasn't up. me, I swear. And that's why they show up at any point in while you're doing missions or whatever. So they can, they can just show up at any time. And he just focuses on any Tenno. Like, he doesn't really care. It, yeah, it's it's Tenno in general. So it can be you. It can be your party member. It's whoever's marked, everyone knows. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone's going to get a, you know, kind of an alert, if you will, that homie's coming and then after you know you get past that um quite once you get to that quest point you will fight the shadow version and he's and you find out who he is exactly etc blah 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 you know and that's story. when you die um and so he tends to have over. um he will have varying abilities that are from other frames so he'll have the ability to switch to various uh weapons that are used by excalibur he will have a variation of smokescreen which is belongs to ash um he'll have a variation of teleport which again is ash um reckoning he'll have a variant of that ability which belongs to oberon and he'll have a basically force pull which belongs to mag and a variation of absorb which belongs to nyx um so these are all dev like obviously i know the names don't make any sense if you've never played the game but that's something you can look up and, you know look into that would be your homework if you don't if you don't mm -hmm. know and you want to know look it up um so that's also why it is a pain in the ass to fight him early on because you don't have the means of dealing with that many abilities early on. Um, also, it feeds into the lore of him hunting Tenno in general. So he's been absorbing and, you know, dealing with all these other frames and taking them out. And so he has their abilities and, and such. Um, oh, so, yeah. yes, so that is who the most terrifying one is in my opinion because he will just show the fuck up out of nowhere um so since we brought him up next on the list is the orokin um they are the previous uh i don't i don't want to say necessarily that these guys are like bad guys in the sense of it's it's not necessarily their fault so i'll put a pin in that and then so the oregon are basically a race that was what the grenier kind of modeled themselves after like that technological part of them is what the grenier like so like the skinny legs and kind of like the bulky armaments kind of comes from the Oregon. Now they are from a time well past, obviously, like they have, you know, they've had their their ruling time and they are well past their prime because the Empire has um collapsed. I also do not want to share too much because this this is an active game or whatnot, so I do if you are interested that, in what I mean, we're saying. Like, it's also a huge knowledge drop. <laughs> yeah, it's that too. It's a huge knowledge drop. Um so you have ancient civilization that ruled over the system 
way back when, back in the day, right? Um, back in my day. Technological masterpieces left and right. Uh, we can't match it today. Like, the today being in, in, uh, in Game of Warframe. That the technology that is now, it nothing. Nothing comes close to it. Um, there, there is not much known about them, mainly due to how long ago it was and how, you know, as time progresses, a lot of things, if you don't have someone to pass on the knowledge, it gets lost. Um, but it is believed that they are pretty much the single-handed reason of the current state of the system as we know it. So they they are very prominent to the way things are. So there's a whole hierarchy of who was ruling, the class, the they the whole thing. Like full blown like golden age society. So like think of any of like the big ones like Greece, Rome, um for my Asian uh types, uh Qing, Ming, um th- those those dynasties um i don't the uh, i'm trying to think of like a, a more a more modern um shoot even the the height of a lot of the the ruling families of in europe would they they still had a big cultural Forty yeah, yeah Forty queen. um but like they were like large mounts of marks of like culture and stuff like that um would be the equivalent of things that these guys are saying now the ones that we come against are corrupted versions of the of this of this people and it is this so don't quote me on this for my diehard warfare and fans i don't know for sure i never fully understood it but for my understanding the reason why they are corrupted is because of other races being in involved in the void basically fucking around in their old places oh, that, that black hole that's uh in the world what well, universe yeah, essentially. Um, so the Orokin themselves aren't around anymore. The the ones that you fight it would be like Grenier, Corpus, and the Infested, who we'll get to momentarily. Um, they're the ones running around under the influence of the orican so they have they're basically like shiny and gold and like eyes and like glimmering and kind of kind of like existence of like walking around in there so they like it's, it's almost very like ascension type like members of these various other factions that came to their old derelicts and mm-hmm were influenced by whatever is left around and got corrupted by said so you know so that's what i that's how i understood it that these guys were fucking around found out and now they're corrupted by the essence of the orokin and here we are now that leads us into this is why you do not fuck around and find out yeah this is why you don't fuck around and find out um it is yeah so and this leads us into the infested and for anyone who's ever played anything with any kind of form of zombie or hive mind of just pure unadulterated instinct of carnage and terror is the same thing of the infested so as marked by the website, the, infest- the infestation is more than a disease. It is a horror of twisted flesh, monsters made into reality, and the blight that consumes its victims and transforms them into unrecognizable atrocities. So, the, vo- uh, the void. The flood. The Halo. flood, yes. 
it's the motherfucker. I would say it's worse than the flood. Really? Now, since I hate Halo, I do mm-hmm. need input on Origins of the Flood. Um. So, yeah. The so the flood. God, what's the best way to go about this? The flood, for all intents and purposes, is the remains of the the original species in the universe uh known as the precursors uh pretty much they were the ones that basically seeded life made life basically the fathers of everything um they're i guess you can call them children uh the forerunners didn't really like them <laughs> So they attacked the precursors, resulting in them like fleeing and like going to stasis throughout the universe. Unfortunately, over the millennia, uh, pretty much the dust that was left of the precursors formed the flood. And well, let's just say they uh, decided to consume everything, (laughs) all knowledge, just everything that could be assimilated into the flood it was going to be assimilated and the flood will learn like if it infects something it will learn everything the host knew so for example if it infects say a high ranking military official like in halo it will learn every single military technique combat strategy that that they knew (laughs) like they are a very dangerous uh enemy okay um and the only way to really wipe out the flood is by eliminating their food source which is all sentient life i see in that respect they're not worse in everything else they're worse because the infestation came from bio warfare so this motherfucker, like, this motherfucker is, was, I say man-made, but it's not really, like, man. It was our boys, the Orchid. Um, and of they. Of course it was. <laughs> so they were, u- so they've used it to fight the sentience, which, if for all intents and purposes, are just basically, um, a AI race. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were pretty much the, um, uh, uh, yeah, so they're, so the sentients are essentially the only ones seen to be truly a, like, an alien race, um, whereas all of the other races were all kind of, like, human or variants of humans that all came from earth Mm -hmm. um whereas the sentients were like their own thing on their own like they're they didn't come from earth and here's the result of them it's they came from their own area and they did not click well with the uh orican being you know the dominant of our space so as a means to combat them they created this virus um, known as the infestation, and things went south. <laughs> um, obviously, we don't have a lot of details due to the nature of Warframe, but they do that on purpose. That a lot of the lore is done in, in you know, an ambiguous fashion, just to kind of, in my opinion, adds to the game because it allows you to make your own conclusions based off of the the information that comes about and your interactions throughout the game of what Mm -hmm. happened or what could have happened versus outright just outright telling you oh this is what happens and you're like well this would have been cool if it was like that well you have that liberty to believe that this is what could happen because for all intents and purposes it very well could have happened that way um so for all that is known it was used as a weapon against the sentience but it didn't have you know as viruses do has no particular 
prejudice of who it attacks. It wasn't just a, oh, this was a virus meant for uh, the sentience. Nope, it, it was just a virus that went after anything and all things. Um, it so wants to, It wants to multiply. Uh, so the Grenier got hit, the Corvus got hit. This thing is so potent, it affected robots. The Corpus robots got affected by this stuff, too. Even the Grenier robots got, like, their technology. This thing is so potent, inorganic and organic is not safe from this shit. They gotta um, try harder. And so, I mean, you gotta try harder. Um, so, the... And now the funny part is... Funny we, joke? We... And our, um, you know, massive space magic weren't affected. So, you know, the Warframes were sent in to deal with it. If the Warframes got infected... I game think that's the game fuck over. over. Game the fuck over. You are correct. It's game the fuck over. Um, ironically, it didn't work on the sentients. They were immune. So the thing that the, the thing that they were you they use this virus for to combat it it didn't affect them. They were just like, "That's cute. What's that? Hmm. Seems to be causing a lot of problems there for you. Is it? What was it for us? And they're like, "Ah, shit. Even the Orkin are not Orkin. immune to it, and they and they fucking had a hand in it. Now, oh, mind goodness. you, they have the ability to keep." most of their consciousness intact mm -hmm. with the infection most of it uh of yeah, the not all of it but not all of it you can tell there is some fuckery going on in there and it's because I they're being eaten away but yep nope pretty much i hear voices <laughs> yep it that's exactly what was happening um so yeah so that's why i say it's i, I would think it's worse than the flood because I'm assuming, correct me if I'm wrong, the flood only affected organic. Beings. Uh, no, no, they can affect technology too. They, uh, they can affect specific like. Best example would be AIs. Uh, they can affect technology with the logic plague. Ah. So yeah, they can basically just get everything good. <laughs> yep. So yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Same thing as flood. Just anything and everything, except not except two things were immune, but that's because you know plot armor um yeah yeah th no there's n there was nothing in the halo universe immune to the flood like e even spartans could get in infected it's harder for them to get infected because of their genetic modifications but they could still get infected and there's actually um if, like if you look at areas like in the lore there is a contingency in case of a spartan getting infected and that is dropping a nuke on them Jesus. That's the only way to stop an infected Spartan, is to drop a nuke. <laughs> um, now, uh, there are some some particular beings that have adapted to the being, you know, around the infestation and all of its effects and whatnot. Because, you know, nature will find a way. Um, but yeah, it, <laughs> it's... Sure, they're, they're still... They're still infested. And so, but you can also get in... Uh, yeah. <coughs> Jesus. Stop dying. Um, can't make any promises. Sunflower Seed was Fair choking enough. the shit out of me. Yep. Um, you do have uh, incorporation of of it, which is um, infested weapons. So that's kind of cool. Like, you get to, you know, use it as a means to combat it. Because, you know, you can only fight with fire with fire, per se. Who knows? I never understood nah, the same. You, 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 you fight fire with an inferno. <laughs> And there's different strains and et cetera. Burn, baby, burn. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Per usual, but, you know, typ typical virus mentality of things. But, yeah, it really, it just, it fucks up anything and everything that it came into contact with. Um, and it was, it was nasty. It was nasty. Yeah, no, it does not sound like a fun time. Um, so, yeah, that is, that is all of the main enemies if you will of the uh 
greater Warframe universe for the most part. Obviously, there's much more. There's neutral, there's neutral enemies that you you can fight in like in the wilds, and like you have like various factions that are not necessarily against you unless you go you support a faction that is counter to them. So they're not necessarily out to get you, only unless you so choose to uh, go against them. That kind of stuff. Um, unless you make them your enemy yeah so they have no reason to come for you unless you come for them and at that point you started it so yeah it is what it is um all right so for our last bit of this episode i would like to pose for you a question this is for anyone and all listening and I would love to hear your answers either via comments on the episode or message via Patreon if you're a subscriber um, or DMs on Instagram. However you choose to get the information to me in Inferno, so choose to do so. And the question is, which villain slash enemy had the greatest arc? And it's, this question is not strained to just games. This could be any form of media. So which mm. villain had the greatest arc? You know, just because I brought him up, I'll say the Flood only because of the fact that those bitches never stay dead. Like, those bitches won't stay down! Um, like, like, they literally... Like the Halo arrays got fired by the, the Forerunners. Presumably, the Flood were wiped out. Many, many years later, on the Halo, found in Halo One, we find out. Oh, hey, there's Flood here. Yeah. Proceed to blow blow up the Halo ring to take out the Flood. Find out there's more Flood. Like they are, they are literally cockroaches. It's like no matter what you do, they do not die. Mm. And also, the even fun part of the Flood is the fact that throughout the Halo series, they literally, like, were enemies, became allies, became enemies again. Yeah. Like, it was a whole thing. And I, I haven't played it, but I know in the latest Halo Wars, um, which takes place after Halo 5, if I remember right, um, the Flood are back. And to me, I'm just like, that's a terrifying thought because does that mean there's a grave mind around? Because a grave mind is kind of like the hive mind, like like the one who's like the main voice of the flood. And grave minds will always retain the memories of all of the previous incarnations of the grave mind. So literally, the grave mind is a precursor. So, yeah, no. They, Insert they... yikes <laughs> button here. Yeah, like, the Flood literally, no matter what has been done to them, they just never will die. Okay, okay, good stuff, good stuff. I am going to give you a curveball. Okay. It's not going to be expected. No one's going to expect this. The one I believe to have... Luigi. The... No, Jar Jar. Um, <laughs> uh, no, we all saw that coming. Um... We all know he's a Sith Lord. <laughs> Um, the, and it's currently go, it's still going, and this is why I, en I enjoy it so much, still going, is Dr. Salone. And for those who don't know, this is a particular individual from the land of Fortnite, who single-handedly oh, has orchestrated the creation of the organization that is keeping essentially the area without going in great detail of the whole story that exists in Fortnite. Yes, there is an actual story going on in that game. Yeah, I know. It's crazy to think about when you, when you hear that sentence. That. Especially since Fort, uh, Futurama is now in Fortnite. Oh, yeah, well, you know, I haven't played in a hot minute, so. Which makes oh, sense yeah. because Futurama came back. So they're always, Woo! they're always, always 
doing something with the next big thing that releases. Now we need uh, Eminence of Shadow in Fortnite. Oh, good googly moogly. I don't know. Maybe when the next season comes, we'll probably, if it lines up with a release time. Have, have a mythic that's just literally atomic. It's just... <laughs> now, it would be like when they put in the uh, the Affinity Blade. Oh, yeah. It would be a special thing that you have to go hunt down. And then, yeah, it would just be a busted power. But, like, there's only one in existence. So it's, like, whoever has it has it. But, like, there's only one. And, like, it takes forever to charge up. Yeah. But if you can, but if you can get it off, like, you just wipe out the entire map. Yeah, you just wipe out that area. If, like, it just nuke that area right there. Um... Yes, so she is the head researcher slash commander of the organization that is essentially in control of the island and actively going against the counterforce organization known as the Seven, who are to keep the stabilization of reality in check, but the it's, uh re reality has been broken it would, yeah and it is all because of salone and that bitch is still running around yeah no she survived getting bitch slapped by a mech she survived getting bitch slapped by a mech and then brushes it off as if we should have expected her to survive like I you, am you, so... you have been gone for years now i'm so tired of you it's be it's it's ridiculous. Like I'm so so tired of you. But yes, no. She hands down is one of the like greatest like arcs because it's still going and like the amount of things she had her hand in and all these contingencies she had in place for if something was to happen. It was just outstanding. So like kudos to those who wrote her, but also fuck you. Yeah, it's just like. And also, whoever wrote the uh, villain for the Chrome, uh, what happened? Uh, mm, yeah, what what happened? Yeah, we haven't heard about the because like that we one. know that the, like we know that the tree opened up and then she's gone. But I'm sorry, she like compared to Sloan, the Chrome who which took over the island literally was kind of a pathetic villain. Well. It was the it was the entity controlling it. Well, because well, that's what I mean. Yeah, because the, the flower was like the flower chick. She was just the herald, so she was just yeah. like the silver surfer of the chrome, which is hilarious in and of itself. Um, I know. <laughs> Reverse the the roles here. Um and yeah, but yeah, we of that, but also, I'm thinking it's the same person that. Is, that was haunting the other the other night that came to the uh, to the island. Yeah, I'm thinking it's that that one, which we we're waiting to get more info on. So yeah, yeah, because like right now in the Fortnite story, it's less like there's a lot of loose ends from when the seven were taken that haven't been answered yet. And so, I think they're using it for the, and they're using the current state, which is everything is busted and broken and not coherent, as a means to work on that story and bring it in as time progresses. Because as things get readjusted and realigned, then it's like, oh, hey, things are coming back to quote unquote normality. And this is what's really been going on, you know, stuff like that. We've just been waiting for Optimus Prime. Yeah, we don't need regular Optimus. <laughs> mm -mm. Um, we have future past Optimus. <laughs> yeah. Um, that trying to explain that to Mermaid was was a handful. Um, because it's and, and to be fair, it is a very difficult concept to explain, especially for someone who's not like really into sci-fi and understands the theoretical workings of it, it's not even time travel it's space travel to that extent and how space time, time it, it, yeah space time travel and how time is such a construct of us and it's our perception of time is what makes things very confusing so it and is, uh, you and you have just given uh, a lot of our audience a headache myself included 
That's fine. You also haven't seen the movie yet. Uh, nope. <laughs> Speaking of which, has, uh, has Cyanide seen it um, yet? I don't think so. Um, I need to have words with her then. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> honestly, we both do because like she saw the Barbie movie before she saw the Transformers movie. To be fair, that's fine. <laughs> Mer- uh, Mermaid and um, Leandra went to see it too. Oh, how they like it? They freaking loved it. They were excited what? as hell. That's her. So yeah, no. Like, um, so yeah, no. I'm not surprised. But yeah, no. We need to have words. Because I've been, I've been waiting to have this conversation with her. Like, this is supposed to be, like, we're supposed to have, like, a whole segment and everything of just talking about Transformers. I want my content, damn it. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll, we'll address that at some point. But, um, all right. Well, that wraps things up here. Um, so, as has things gone, we hope you enjoyed our time here, uh, your time here, uh, listening to the fun... The sound's coming over our face holes. Uh. And uh, we hope that the continued support um, is, well, continued. (laughs) And and that you are, you know, still enjoying what we have. Um, I know that from the people who have been with us since day one, it is way different than uh, what I said I was shooting for in the first place. Yeah, and I'm actually talking. We're so proud of him. We we love a growth arc. It's great. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so we thank you for all of that. Um, again, if you would like to support us in a more monetary value, uh, please subscribe through the Spotify link. If you are just audio and you have us just on your car drive to work back and have us in the background while you whipping up that good food you may be cooking for yourself or and of course uh, if you ever have any ideas for what you like to hear on here or just have us answer uh, let us know uh, let us know um there goes that sunflower seed again you really gotta stop eating nah i'm hungry um <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna eat more food when we're done here and when uh if you would like to support us a little bit more uh, you can go to the Patreon and join our Dracolite level, which gives you access to more of the Discord. Um, and, uh, yeah, all of the fun things that are there. I'm, I, I feel like we should keep it a secret. And so, if you would like to know what is there, join. And then you can see all the fun that we have there. Um, so, yeah. Uh, we hope you have a rest of your whatever it is when you are listening to this. Uh, have a good time. Drink water. Stay hydrated, especially if you're where we are. Yep. If, if you are in a any kind of hot state, uh, hope you are staying cool and hydrated. Um, and this, since we know we are this international. Summer is still hot as hell. For all of our other people, if you are in a hot climate, again, stay hydrated, stay safe, don't implode. Because without you, we have no one who's going to listen to our nonsense. And there is a lot of it. And there is a lot of it. So, until the next episode, we will see you then. Have As a good day. Bye. Or night, I don't know. <laughs>